In Des Moines' earlier days, the zoological lake area was best known for boating in warmer weather, skating in the winter, and the zoological garden that for a time occupied the island area in the Des Moines River. After the garden closed down, a local businessman, Joseph W. Mulehaupt, purchased the land and with it the option for use of the zoological lake. The lake's thick ice, plentiful and clean, fed by artesian springs, became useful for something besides recreation, the harvesting of ice for cold storage, during the era when ice boxes were a common home kitchen item. Another Des Moines businessman, Horace E. Teachout, operated, along with his other interests, the Des Moines Ice Company on a plot of land just across from the island. In 1910, Teachout decided to divest himself of the firm and sold it to Joseph Mulehaupt. The company kept its original name, but later became the Des Moines Ice and Fuel Company once a coal delivery service was added. Business was good from the outset, such that when a new use for the island area was proposed by local entrepreneur Abe Frankel, Mulehaupt was game to take part, leasing the land to Frankel and purchasing shares of stock in the new venture. The project's name? Riverview Park. This was the heyday of Coney Island in New York, and Frankel aimed to create a local version of the park with carnival rides. Speedboats, a bathing beach, a wooden roller coaster, and a venue for live music and dancing, the beautiful Riviera Ballroom. It opened in the summer of 1915 and was a landmark success. Riverview Park brought wonder and amusement to the people of Iowa for over 60 years, surviving floods and fires until its sale and closure in 1978. Between Riverview and Des Moines Ice and Fuel, Joseph Mulehaupt ruled the summer and the winter. Late each year, once temperatures had dropped below freezing, it was harvest time, the surface ice averaging seven to nine inches thick. Gas-powered saws scored deep grooves in the ice, measured to a standard width of 14 inches. Once the grooves were cut, crews of bundled up workers separated the ice into uniform blocks with the use of hand saws. Once cut, the blocks were loaded to be pulled across the pond to the riverbank. There, the blocks would be grooved for easy stacking, then loaded by hand onto conveyor belts. At the top of the belts, the blocks were then loaded onto rail cars for distribution. Much of this ice was offloaded at the company's downtown Maple Street facility for delivery to local businesses and to the thousands of Des Moines homes with ice boxes waiting in their kitchens. A common sight in the windows of these homes was the sign for the ice man. With a hole and a number on each side, the sign could be turned so the ice man could see from his cart just how much ice to deliver. Many more of the railroad cars carried ice from Des Moines to outlying cities across Iowa. Not all the ice was shipped out immediately. Some 20,000 tons of it was packed in sawdust and canvas and stored in warehouses for use in the warmer seasons. The fuel part of Des Moines Ice and Fuel meant coal. It is often forgotten that the coal industry thrived for many years in central Iowa. It made sense for Des Moines Ice and Fuel, with its vast storage capacity and citywide delivery system, to sell coal along with its ice. But for a time, other small businesses, totally unrelated to the fuel trade, tried adding coal sales as a sideline. Locally mined coal was delivered to thousands of homes to be burned in their furnaces until natural gas and fuel oil eventually replaced it as a heating fuel source and also when Iowa's coal became cost prohibitive. 
Around 1950, coal was dropped from the business model of Des Moines Ice and Fuel. The post-World War II boom in electrical appliances meant the electric refrigerator was rapidly displacing the icebox in home kitchens. Frozen food sales soared, while home ice delivery melted away, and harvesting ice from the river became a thing of the past. It was a major turning point for Des Moines Ice and Fuel, and for the industry itself. Even though ice and coal were lost as mainstays of the business, the company seized this change as an opportunity to reimagine itself. Ice making and refrigeration were all electric now, and instead of selling ice as its main product, the company instead sold cold storage as a service. The frozen food boom demanded a huge increase in the need to store products before they made it to stores and homes. Edward Charles Muehlhaupt took over the business from his father and oversaw the changes that took the company into a new era. With these changes came a new name, Des Moines Cold Storage. At the dawn of the 1960s, Edward Muehlhaupt was beset by failing health. He recruited his two elder sons, Chuck and Joe, to oversee the company, which they did successfully until their deaths in the early 2010s. Their younger brother, John Paul, carries on in their stead, taking the firm into its newest incarnation. Here in the 21st century, Des Moines Cold Storage's reach goes far beyond Iowa to the rest of the U.S. and overseas. China has become a major market for U.S. food, with a great appetite for our pork and beef, which are loaded from the company's vast warehouses to trucks and trains headed toward the ports. In the past, Des Moines Cold Storage has stored an eclectic variety of items for its clients. Examples include police evidence, flowers, moose racks, tractors, zoo food, even the butter used each year to sculpt the Iowa State Fair's famous butter cow. The most recent growth for the company is reflected in the Crossroads Project. The Crossroads 40-acre distribution campus is located in the Des Moines Agri-Merchant Industrial Park. It will be the new hub for Des Moines cold storage with room to expand and attracting many other built-to-suit meat processing centers. The Crossroads facility was designed using the decades of the company's experience, plus utilizing state-of-the-art technology and strategic logistics to meet today's worldwide demand for U.S. food products in ways both efficient and effective. As you are sure to experience for yourself, Crossroads is the integral element that keeps Des Moines cold storage at the forefront of the industry for now and many years to come. Let me know when I can call around I would like to be wise man I'm selling the coldest eyes in town Ladies all think that I'm a nice ice man Love to see me when I call around The lady living over there Across the creek She gets one piece and it lasts a whole week The better let me be your ice man I'm selling the coldest eyes in town Tell down the ice man Ice man 